Hey players, how you doing? Welcome back to Player's Guide. As promised, I'm here with a video on unlicensed NES games that were released here in North America. I'm also going to break down at the end of this video what the rarest games are to collect if you're interested in collecting unlicensed games. But first off, let me talk a little bit about unlicensed games. So unlicensed games were exactly that. Nintendo didn't license them for whatever reason. Um, and some of these companies, you can clearly tell why they didn't unlicense them and others, there are, you know, different reasons. Now I have a few videos up. Uh, there's one on Comerica. There's also one on Tengen. Please check those videos out. If you're not subscribed to the channel already, I am thinking about doing some videos to cover all of the different companies that released unlicensed games so let me just cover the major companies and what they are i'll get into some of the other stuff that's out there but the ones that most people consider when they're going for a complete north american nintendo entertainment system are these ones so you have tengen which was a subsidiary company of atari and um, they had three games that they had licensed that was RBI Baseball Gauntlet and Pac-Man. You can get those in gray cartridges. Then there's 20 of these black cartridges um, that Nintendo didn't license and they found their way around the lockout chip, which is something a lot of these companies did and a lot of these companies also struggled with who were releasing unlicensed games. And the rarest Tengen game to collect is Tengen Tetris. Comerica... Codemasters, now they are known for creating the Game Genie. Uh, a lot of people know Dizzy. That was probably the most popular and common of the Comerica games. Uh, they come in this gold cartridge. They have this uh, switch on the back. I'm not sure if that is to work its way around the lockout chip or so that there is, uh, they're able to play these games in different PAL regions. So there are 13 of those games. There's also the Aladdin Deck Enhancer if you want to count that. Uh, but on these gold cartridges, there are 13 different ones. The rarest Comerica game is Big Nose Freaks Out. Bunch, Color Dreams, Wisdom Tree. Totaling 27 different games released by these companies. Um, so both of these two are color dreams, but they had blue cartridges and they had black cartridges. And if you're really into collecting unlicensed stuff, many of these games will have both variations, blue and black. However, not all of them do. And uh, in certain situations, the black cartridges uh, like this one can be the more difficult version to find, although not always. And the rarest game from Color Dreams Bunch Wisdom Tree games would be Secret Scout. Uh, Menace Beach is also pretty rare, and Menace Bleach has a uh, black cart variation, which is a little bit more rare than the blue. Next one up is the American Video Entertainment cartridges. They look like this. Uh, I think most people are familiar with the game... Um, Trolls on Treasure Island and um, Crazy Creatures. Uh, they're not too bad, those games, and, you know, uh, they are more common. Um, the rarest game is Rad Racket 2 Deluxe. So something else kind of interesting about American Video Entertainment games is that they had three different versions of impossible missions. So they had one that looks like this and one that looks like this, which is a weird cartridge that says SEI. I don't know, maybe that's a different company that released it. Um, and then they have another one with a similar label to this that's white. There's also a cartridge called Maxi 15 and that one has all of the games from American Video Entertainment on it. The next company is called American Game Cartridges, and they made Chiller, um, which a lot of people are familiar with. They also made Death Race and Shockwave. They only made three games, and it's quite clear why Nintendo didn't license these games, um, because they all are more violent or gory uh, than games that Nintendo usually did license. 
there's also a whole world full of different unlicensed games that you could play on your NES. There are the HES games, which uh, seem to be very predominant in Australia. There's also the Gluk games, a little more predominant in Europe. Then there are the Sachin games, and the Sachin games, um, there is a ton of different Sachin games, and I think the rarest one of the Sachin games uh, people consider to be is Huge Insect. Um, and this is really getting in deep into collecting unlicensed stuff for the NES. And if you want to even go deeper, there's stuff that was released in Brazil. And some of the Brazil stuff are just on like weird, different cartridges. Um, some of those games we got here, some of them you didn't. This one is Street Fighter 2010. It actually has some cool artwork on it. Um, but yeah, the world of unlicensed NES is a big one. So let's talk about the rares. What are the rarest unlicensed North American released Nintendo Entertainment System games? So I would have to say Cheetah Men 2 is probably the rarest. Uh, it might be debatable. Myriad 6 and 1 is also very rare. Uh, the thing about Cheetah Men 2, some people don't even count it because it was a game that was discovered and then um, released. So the story is that uh, somebody discovered the games in a uh, warehouse somewhere um, and the game wasn't complete. So this is another reason some people don't really consider it part of the, you know, uh, complete Nintendo Entertainment System library. I mean, a lot of this stuff is debatable, folks. And for the sake of it, this game is going to be on my list because I do consider it. Um, and it's a rare game. You know, it was it was purchased, I believe, online. Uh, you had to let the person know and uh, and people bought them because, I mean, it was a cool thing, right? Somebody found a box of uh, unreleased game. Now, Myriad 6 and 1, uh, this has an interesting story. There's another game on this list, Cultron 6 and 1. And what had happened is I guess this company, Myriad, purchased this company, Cultron. And Cultron is already a rare game. And they slapped... Um, this new sticker over top of the label of the Cultron 6 in 1, and they sold those. And obviously, there was less of those because they just bought the remainder of the Cultron games, whatever was left over. Next up are the Panesian games. Now, in my opinion, I tend to see Peekaboo Poker less than the other games. Then there's Hot Slots. And then Bubble Bath Babes. Bubble Bath Babes, I see a little bit more, but I also feel like that's the more popular of the three games. Racer Mate Challenge is next on the list. Racer Mate Challenge is a cartridge that coincided with a peripheral that could be hooked up to your bicycle, and then you would hook that up to your NES, and it was a cycling game. And a lot of people don't even know about this one, or I never knew it existed. And, you know, it never got licensed, so it's pretty rare. Uh, to follow that up is Cultron 6-in-1. This is a very rare game, uh, but not nearly as rare as the Myriad 6-in-1 um, that I touched upon earlier. Action 52. So Action 52 has a few different variations. The most common is the green uh, PCB in the clear case. And then the next rarest Action 52 variant is uh, the Blackboard Action 52. Um, I believe the Blackboard was a promotional uh, demo Action 52 cartridge that was uh, given away for those purposes. And then there are two or three known copies of the Blue Action 52 and this Action 52 is like, it's a prototype demo version. And, you know, not many people have that um, unless they were, you know, directly associated with the production of this game. Now, this game was sold on the shopping channel. From what I understand, I don't remember ever seeing the ads, but you can 
go watch them if you'd like to see the Cheetah Men. Um, you can see some videos on YouTube. That about covers all of the unlicensed games. If you think I missed something or you have more information that you would like to share about a specific company or, or type of game that was unlicensed, please do. There's a comment section below. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, I'd appreciate it if you did. That's it for this episode of Player's Guide. Later, players.